This is the third video in my Transformer Concepts series. Here we're looking at the secondary winding and this concept called mutual induction. What we've seen so far is that the primary of a transformer is basically an inductor, a coil. And if I apply an AC voltage across a coil, the resulting, well, the current will be constantly changing, which makes a magnetic field that constantly changes also. And that magnetic field will induce, create or induce into this wire, a voltage that is exactly opposite the applied voltage. My lens is law and I have it here, the applied voltage and the induced voltage. Let's call it self induction here because it's inducing that voltage into itself. But if it is really just that magnetic field there that is inducing or creating that voltage, could I take another wire, not connected at all in any way to this, and put this wire in that magnetic field and induce the voltage into this wire? Well, let's try it. We'll turn this on. It's humming, that's a good thing. And all I have here is this coil of wire. It's connected to my meter here to check voltage. I'm gonna turn that on. It's gonna squeal a little bit here because it auto senses between volts and, and uh, resistance. Um, but I'll get here, I'll get a couple wraps on here and that'll uh, quiet it down. There's one, two, three, four, five. Push those down. Yeah, 1.3 volts. There's a decimal point right in there and uh, V for volts and a little sine wave implying it's AC. So it, somehow it does create some voltage. And I'll call this mutual induction because self induction is just into itself, but mutual, like mutual bank or mutual insurance company is between two or more people. So it's in mutually inducing into another wire. There's a primary and a secondary. So we have a voltage. But what happens if I add some more turns? Is the voltage changing? Yeah, it's increasing. If I add another one there, 1.9, this 2.22, get this one, we're about two and a half. It's about a quarter volt per turn, it seems to be. So if I take four uh, loops here and put them on there, if it's a quarter volt per turn, should be about another volt. So let's expect to get to about three and a half here by putting four on there. And sure enough, three and a half, and one, two, uh, these are all looped up here, what am I gonna do? Get them there, I got another four, let's put another four on there, get that thing up to about four and a half. Now push them on there, is it? Yeah, 4.6, now notice this, if I move it up, I have less voltage, uh, yeah, three point something, I move it down, I get more. It has to do with something I mentioned in the last video. As I pull these out so I can put the secondary on, they get further away and the flux lines also have to go through the air here. So it, it, we could use the term magnetic coupling. The coupling between the primary and the secondary is not as good up here as it is down here. Okay, but normally these would be closed and we'd have you know a, a good even magnetic field up and down here, relatively speaking. Um, so we have those. And what this answers for me is more turns equals more voltage. You know, it's kind of like our batteries. If I take batteries, sure, they're DC and this is AC going back and forward. But if I put these batteries, more of them in series, I keep adding voltage. Now, here, what have I done? Each turn is picking up some voltage. And each turn, it's the same wire, so it's basically in series with each other, adding voltage. More turns, more voltage. And we have a formula for that. It's, uh, we take the number of turns in the primary divided by the number of turns in the secondary. And that ratio will equal the ratio of the voltages between the primary uh, voltage on the primary coil and the voltage induced into the secondary coil. So right now, I have a lot fewer turns on the secondary than I do on the primary. So this number is a lot smaller than this number. We'll stand to reason that the voltage on the secondary is a lot smaller than the primary. Sure enough, 120 volts here, stepping down 
to four and a half volts on the uh, secondary. Now, if I kept putting more and more turns here until they were the same number of turns on the primary and secondary, those would be the same. So to equal this, the voltages would be the same. And if I kept going and had more turns on the secondary, then the voltage on the secondary would be higher. That would be a step up transformer. So that answers this first question. More turns, more voltage. But how about if I reverse the turns? These are all going in the same direction. But if I go off to lunch and I come back and I start winding them, you know, turn this back and start winding them on the wrong direction, what happens? We got about 4.6 there. What happens if I put on another couple the wrong way? Voltage starts going down. Put on a couple more. Goes down even lower. Now I think I'm probably below four. Yeah, 3.6. So why did it take the voltage away when I turned it the other direction? Well, let's think about this. And if you don't catch this right away, don't worry about it. Don't be too troubled. Now it is AC, it's going back and forward. But at one moment in time, when the voltage in the primary is going this direction, remember our Lenz's law, the induced voltage, whether into the, the primary self-induction or into the secondary mutual induction, the induced voltage at that moment will directly oppose, will go right against the applied voltage. So whether it's in the bottom part that's going this direction clockwise, or the top uh, three or four wraps that are going counterclockwise, it's still inducing it in this direction. So the ones that are going clockwise come along here, and I'll turn this so you can kind of see this picture here a little bit. The um, they're coming along here and getting all added together and that voltage is pushing here, ready to make another turn and add more volts. But these other ones that are wrapped the wrong way are still creating voltage the same direction. So they're coming here, their four wraps taking their one volt, coming here and it's, that one volt is pushing against the four and a half. Kind of like my batteries here again, where I have three of them together, if I come you know, put the fourth battery in. If I put it this way, I'm going to add voltage. But if I put it backwards, I'm going to take voltage away. So it's a similar concept to that. The kind of phase relationship, if you will. And the main reason I, I do that here is I have another video. I, I call it 120, 240 volt in phase or out of phase. And I explain in there what happens when you reverse the windings. But here we're doing it practically and seeing what happens. So let's pull those uh, final four um, off of here. And we'll have just our, back to our 4.6 volts. Okay, so you might ask me then, does it matter if the secondary is wound clockwise or counterclockwise? Well, as long as the whole thing is going the same direction, it doesn't matter. It's just gonna be the secondary sine wave relative to the primary. And normally you take the secondary and run its own loads. Where that would matter is uh, maybe you're trying to understand a buck boost transformer. And to understand those, you have to know the relationship, the, you know, the, the sine wave or phase relationship between the secondary and primary windings. Or if I'm taking several transformers and parallel, paralleling them together, then I have to make sure the sine waves are all synced up with each other. But here's the main point. More turns, more voltage, and then if I reverse some of them, I'm going to start taking some of that voltage away. And that's pretty much it for today's video. Next, oh, well, let me make another point here. Um, on this uh, transformer, I put the primary on the inside and I'm wrapping the secondary around the outside. Now that's because I'm manipulating the secondary and I will in future videos as well when I set up this system. But uh, some of the transformers you install may well have the uh, secondary on the inside and the primary on the outside. So it doesn't matter as long as they're both in the same magnetic field. One is inducing into the other one. So my next video, what I'm going to get into is uh, taps. Here I can pull turns on and off to change the voltage, but when you buy a transformer, normally they're all on there. So how can I have variable input or variable output voltages? And we use taps. Transformer Taps, coming up in the next video. Thank you.